Well, Dad, I got you here on time. There's your pride and joy just coming off the turntable. Yes, sir, the old express. Hold on, Steve. I'll take her down. You're jealous of this old boiler, Dad. Why shouldn't I be? My boy, she's part of me. Or maybe I'm just part of her. I don't know. I took her out on her first run. And I hope I'll be at her throttle when I make my last. Too bad the old heat's out of date. What do you mean, out of date? You're talking about the Hurricane Express, the fastest train in the country, the fastest train in any country. Out of date. Huh. Well, I wasn't comparing her to train. Them playthings. <laughs> the Hurricane Express gets you there on time. She's safe, and she's sure. Okay, Dad. You stick to your engine, and I'll stick to my plane. And I'll beat you to Springfield by three hours, as usual. Oh, yeah? Yeah. If you hauled as many passengers as I do, you wouldn't land them in a week and a half. You win, Dad. Don't let your rails get rusty. What are you doing in the enemy's line? <laughs> well, according to this ticket, I'm going to be a passenger on your plane. Gee, that's great. But what a story for the scandal sheet. Miss Gloria Martin, <laughs> secretary to the railroad general manager, does her traveling by air. <laughs> well, this is a special occasion. I'm not going to make a habit of it. I wish you would. <laughs> anyway, I'll get a big thrill out of seeing our railroad from the air. <laughs> well, well, Gloria, this is an unexpected pleasure. How are you, Mr. Gray? Fine, thank you. Isn't it time you were getting ready, Baker? Why? Aren't pilots allowed to talk to passengers? <laughs> well, sometimes, but not when the manager wants to talk to her himself. Oh. I'll see you later, Gloria. I'm glad to see you're getting air-minded at last. When are you going to quit the railroad and come to work for me? Why, I hadn't given it any thought.
Son and her can expect to go to crash. What are you doing? I'm going to try and sidetrack one of those trains. You can't make a landing here. You track up the plane. I've got to take that chance. We can't let those trains crash. Has Baker gone crazy? Tell him I said he's not to attempt a landing. Orders from Gray. I knew he'd stop you. He can't stop me. Orders or no orders. Those people are racing to certain death. <laughs> Mr. Gray, I gave him your orders, but... Well, you tell Baker he's fired. You take the plane on yourself. He died instantly. He might have saved himself if he had jumped. Jim Baker wasn't that kind. He knew it was his life or ours, and he gave his. You did this! You killed my father! <laughs> Uh-huh. And these wrecks haven't been accidents after all. Oh, but who could have held such a grudge against the railroad? Well, there's plenty of them. Old Stratton, for instance. Didn't he threaten to get in with the road for sending him to jail? And didn't he escape a while back? Well, whoever is back of it means my father was murdered. And I'll bring that murder to justice that takes the rest of my life. Express. It gets you there. Sometimes. You've got to go back. Back? To prison? Yes. He was safe in prison. Now they suspect that you're behind all these mysterious accidents on the railroad. There's been another terrible wreck. Oh, uh, never mind the wreck. I know all about it. There. 
And you did have something to do with it. Why, Gloria, are you turning against me, too? When I tell you the railroad company did frame me, they held out evidence of my trial, that would have cleared me. I do believe in you, Dad, and I'm trying to find the papers that you want, but I must be careful. Does anybody suspect that you are Gloria Stratton? No. To them, I'm just Gloria Martin, the general manager's secretary. Good, good. Everything depends upon you. Until you secure that evidence, I'll be what an animal, a fugitive from justice. And when you returned from fixing the pump, where was Jordan? When I climbed into the cab, Jordan was just reaching for the throttle. But Mr. Edwards, I'll tell you, I was just coming to. Now, we heard your story, Jordan. Carson. Yes, sir. You reported that 59 ran through your signal. Did you see anybody in the engine cab? Yes, sir, I did. Who was it? Uh, it was Jordan, the engineer. That's a lie! You couldn't have seen it. Oh, I get it. It's a frame-up. And you're in on it. If uh, you're through with me, Mr. Edwards, I... I'd like to get back to my station. All right, Carson, you may go. That concludes the inquiry. Gordon, you will remain. The evidence in the case proves that you are guilty of criminal negligence. You are discharged. Discharged, am I? After 30 years of faithful service. And on the lying word of a boomer agent that just had been here about three months ago. Need you render a decision now, Mr. Edwards? As counsel for the road, I feel that this matter requires further investigation. The evidence is clear. My decision is final. So you're making me the goat. For the past three months, things have been going wrong on this road. Great trains. Open switches. Overlapping orders, mysterious wrecks, and you can't find out who's responsible. Well, you're not going to frame it on to me. Nobody's trying to frame anything on you, Jordan. You're discharged for cause. Oh, that's the answer, is it? So you're blacklisting me, driving me out of railroading. All right, Mr. Edwards. You've made a marked man out of me. Now you watch my smoke. Is that a threat? I am done talking. Actions speak louder than words. I believe Jordan told the truth. There must be someone behind all these wrecks, someone with a grudge against the railroad. Why, Larry, what makes you say that? Didn't you notice how Carlson acted in there? He was afraid of something. He knew more than he told. And I'm going down to Plainville tonight and check up on him. Larry, what good would that do you? Well, I intend to find the man that caused that wreck and murdered my father. If Jordan is innocent, we can't admit that there have been any mysterious happenings on the road. We've lost too much business already. The air transport company is eating into our passenger traffic, and... Do you suppose that Walter Gray could be our mysterious enemy? I wouldn't be surprised. You know, he's never forgiven you for having fired him as traffic manager of the road. I know, but there's someone else I have more reason to suspect. Who's that? Stratton. 
Now that you mention it, you know, it is strange that all these things have happened since he escaped from prison. You know, I'll never be safe until Stratton is again behind the bars. Director's office. One moment, please. Mr. Phillips of the Smelter Company is calling you, Mr. Edwards. Your gold shipment is going on a Hurricane Express tonight. And now I assure you there's nothing to worry about. The man responsible for that wreck has been discharged. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Just as I said, Walter Gray is using the wreck as an argument to get the smelter business away from us. Edward speaking. Quick, take this down. B. Hurricane. Express. Will. Not. Get. Through. Tonight. The wrecker. Hello. Uh, oh, uh, try and trace that call, will you? And send Mr. Matthews in here to me at once. Looks as if Jordan was right. If it's the wrecker that struck him down, and he'll try the same game tonight. Well, if he does, we'll be waiting for him. Oh, Matthews, come here. Come here, look at this. Now, that's your job. You will be on that train tonight with as many men as you need. Put a special guard around that gold shipment and have an armed man in the engine cab. We've got to get that wrecker. Uh, this man will be in your engine cab throughout the run.
see anything suspicious? No, not a thing. Okay, Bill? Okay. it's going to be. But what's going to happen to the record? He's on the train. Don't worry. He won't be on there when she crashes. It's only Bill. Hello, Bill. Seen the record yet? Here she comes. 